Hello, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan, and I'm back on June 20th to talk about tomorrow, June 21st, League of Legends DFS Slate. Welcome and welcome back um, to, to my videos. Um, I have been moving my family for my new job, my full-time job that I have um to another state so it's been real crazy chaos um you know packing and moving and unpacking and shit like that we still have boxes i don't know if you can see it um in the background but i still have piles and piles of boxes but enough of my soap box um today we have a five game slate um so i'll dive in into each of those matchups here um i already looked through the metrics and I'll kind of go through what I think based on those metrics and then also my eye test. I still have been watching, you know, League of Legends over the past week or so. So um, I'll share a few thoughts and, you know, thoughts or two here and there. But yeah, before we dive in, though, <clears throat> I don't have my son with me at the moment. But, you know, he would say, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you can, if you find our videos helpful, um, it would mean a lot <clears throat> if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have three games in China and two games in Korea. Um, we have EDG versus AL. Um, EDG is a heavy favorite. I think minus 774, around minus 800. And then Weibo Gaming against Thunder Talk. Um, Weibo Gaming is another huge favorite on the slate at minus 670. Um, and then we have BLG versus LNG, which is like a toss-up game in that matchup, which will be interesting and ha has the highest total kill projection on the slate. And then in, two in Korea, we have two games. We have Sandbox and we have Freddy... Uh, sorry. Okay, Breon. Um... We, where Sandbox is a little bit of a favorite there. And then we have a T1 as a huge favorite. I think the biggest favorite on the slate, yep, um, over Kwangdo Freaks. So, and I don't think T1 is, should be the biggest favorite on the slate, but I'll digress and I'll get to it when I talk about that matchup. All right, let's look at the EDG uh, versus AL. I would like to kind of, uh, make sure that I go through the lineups, the starting uh, confirmed starters um, for these Chinese matchups, and then maybe start diving into the analysis of it. Um, no changes for EDG, but anyone's legend, I just want to point out, Pins is starting at mid, and then GCE is starting at A to carry. Um, so I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that. Um, some of these like lower tier teams that have been losing a lot, um, have been experimenting with their development players, you know, have play, been playing starting some bench players. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that and play the right players that are starting. It's like playing the second string quarterback, you know, if, if you're speaking the NFL DFS terms. If you if that player doesn't start, you probably shouldn't play him. All right. EDG versus AL. Total kills over under is set at 24. Um, CKPM is set at 0.83 for EDG and AL's uh, 0.76. So that's pretty fast. You know, I think that is one of the fastest average CKPM we, ha we have um, other than the BLG LNG matchup we'll talk about later. So I think this has a good kill upside um, as the odds indicate as well. Um, but in terms of the actual matchup, um, I think it's an interesting one only because JJ for EDG, you know, usually he's a, he's like known to be a really good, probably a great jungler in the LPL. But for some reason, this split, the summer split, he just has not been playing well. If you, even if you look at his metrics, I mean, amongst the junglers, I'll show you. I was looking through the metrics. I mean, you see EGPM earned goals per minute, which is the, the metric that I look at for individual players, especially the junglers, because you know, they have to share resources. And if you're dominating the jungle, you will likely have a higher EGPM. So JJ is actually down here, like not, I mean, maybe in the mid tier um, jungler, I guess at the moment, just based on that metric. 
Um, and then their their opponent, A.L. Xiao Hao, is actually above J.J. So it, it, it tells me that J.J. has not been having a good jungling performance throughout the split so far. Um, they're kind of like mediocre junglers here, both junglers in this matchup between EDG and AL. Um, in terms of gold spend per difference, uh, percentage difference, um, EDG has an advantage there. Um, jungle control percentage, EDG has an advantage. And then lane control percentage, EDG still has a, a fa advantage there. Um, jungle EGPM that I just talked about, like I said, Xiao Hao um, for AL has a slight advantage, but not, not very much. And then in every single lanes, except for that jungle position, EDG actually has a huge favorite advantage there, including Uzi, who I think is in a good spot if EDG wins tonight. So given all of that, I mean, you see that the stats are not really popping off in favor of EDG, um, especially the jungle control and all that. That worries me. Um Usually with these like high odds, you want to see their jungler have like superior advantage over the counterpart um, by a significant amount. But here it's not even that. I mean, it's far from that. I actually, Xiao Hao leads, you know, in the EGPM. So. so that's why I said EG probably does not deserve these odds based on the metrics above. There is a bug. I'm sorry. Um, not the best jungle performance by JJ the split so far. Um, I apologize if that was too loud. I'm trying to, you know, we moved into this new house and we have some mosquitoes. Um, sorry. All right. So yeah. So I don't think I don't think EDG deserves those odds, but EDG probably should still win. Just looking at, you know, each lane matchup. I mean, you see Uzi over GGE. I mean, Uzi has a huge advantage there. It's just based on the metrics, but also based on the eye test. And then, like, they've been in and out with pins versus harder in the mid lane. So, like, I feel like there's really the lack of consistency there. Um, so, I don't know. So, we'll see. I mean, Fofo really has not had the best mid lane performance either. Just like I, just like what I said about JJ, um, but I think they're still better than Xiao Hao and Pins, in my opinion. Um, and the, and then also in the top lane, yeah, I mean Allah is probably better than ZDZ, and ZDZ actually has been pretty decent for a, anyone's legend. Um, but I still think EDG, uh, Allah is better, but also every single other lane. I mean, I think EDG really should win. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with EDG wins two. Two one maybe, I think maybe Xiao Hao has a pop off game and he can maybe take them to a victory, um in this matchup, which I think could happen really. Like I said, the metrics don't really pop off. EDG has been struggling a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, and then good kill upside. I mean, decent. God, this bug. Sorry about that. Trying to kill that bug. All right. Next matchup is Weibo Gaming versus Thunder Talk. Um, that's an interesting one, I think. Um, Weibo Gaming really has been up and down. Um, but I think overall, like I think he's they've been a pretty good team. Um, total kills over under is set at 23, so not as fast as the EDG AL game that I, that we just talked about. Um, and it kind of it's supported by their CKPMs as well. So like this is this one is projected to be the lowest kill upside game in the LPL games. Um, and then GSPD gold spend percentage difference. Weibo Gaming has a huge, huge advantage there. Um, and the jungle control percentage, it's really minimal difference. And I'll tell you why that's funny about it, because really, like to me, Weiwei, you know, after winning that first matchup against GD, JDG, I think JDG had a MSI hangover, you know, just coming off of that big international tournament. I think they just kind of underestimated Weibo Gaming. It looked way, it made Weiwei look really good, but it kind of shows that he has been, you know, actually that was kind of a misconception, misconception, um, misperception rather, um, that, that people had um, about Weiwei. Uh, his metrics are really bad. But guess what? 
Beige ones, <laughs> it's not much better than Weiwei's. So really, uh, Beige one only has a plus three advantage there in EGPM. So really, they're about even. Um, I think I think Weibo Gaming has better laners. I mean, Xiaohu over UCAL. Um, not by very much. Like, UCAL has a, had a really good spring split, um, but now in the summer split, he hasn't been as good. But Xiaohu hasn't been, um, him hasn't been great either. I mean, he's been okay. So I think that's a wash. But in the 80 carry position is where I think Light has a huge advantage there over 1xn um and i think it is yeah it is supported by the metric as well there's a huge egpm gap between light and 1xn so i do think light should have an advantage there and then in the jungle like i said it's not a huge advantage in favor of h1 so given all of that where egpm is um favored for Weibo gaming in every single lane if, except for jungle, but like I said, that's a slight advantage for the TT. So I, I do think Weibo Gaming really should win this two to zero. Um, I do think Weiwei is a. <laughs> it's not like I said, it's, he's not the best jungler. So if Beichuan for some reason like comes what comes with like you know a ceiling game where he plays well, he gets a kill early game and tries to snowball from there. I mean, I think. Weibo Gaming could struggle potentially, but I mean, just that Beichuan, based on his form currently in the summer, does not really scare me that he's going to do that two games in a row against Weibo Gaming <sighs> over Weiwei. So I'm just going to kind of bank on that idea. Um, and every single other lane, like I said, the Shy, he's not a very friendly DFS player because he just does not do much that scores fantasy points. <laughs> so I probably won't play him, even if I have the Weibo gaming stack. But at the same time, he is a very good player, in-game player um, against Hoya. I think he will have an advantage there. And then Xiaohu, Light, and Chris. But like I said, they are better players than Yukal, 1XN, and Yao Yao, their counterparts. So I'm going to go with Weibo Gaming wins 2-0. to zero. Um, Even though this is a low kill upside, this is probably the the best um, that I'm most confident in winning. Um, so I think that's probably where I'm going to go um, right now in DFS. All right. BLG versus LNG is a toss-up for... Some reason, um, I think people really respect LNG, um, and and I understand why. I think LNG has had a really good spring split in the past, and I mean he's they won eleven games and six losses, so I get it. I mean they've played well, and their GSPD is positive and the positive, so they're playing well, but not as good as BLG. I think BLG just has been lights out i mean they've won 12 games uh let's look at the lpl standings i want to see that real quick sure. yeah tes jdg blg is six and one and lng is actually five and two so they've been pretty good. Um, LNG has been on a three-game winning streak, whereas BLG has lost the last series, I believe. Yeah. Um, so let's look at that real quick. Who did they lose to again? No. Did it? Oh, it's LNG. Sorry. Oh, JDG. Yeah. So BLG is playing against some tough tough teams um they're playing they played uh jdg lost both games now they're playing against lng who's played edg okay not too impressive rare adam not too impressive fpx no see like they lost to some good teams but then they beat all the bad teams so i think blg should still be favored i'm just a little disappointed in that i think i don't know why um, I, I don't know why it's a toss up. I think BLG should be favored by like maybe negative 200 or so. 
odds wise. So that is probably where I'm gonna where I'm gonna go. I think it kind of lowers the BLG's ownership. Maybe it will. I don't know. It depends on what people think about LNG. I think just given the pricing difference slightly, even though it's slight, um, I think maybe a lot of people will play LNG just to fit an EDG or a Weibo Gaming. I think. But, I mean, you saw the, I mean, you see here on my notes that Jungle, EGPM, um, June over uh, Tarzan <clears throat> has a plus 53 difference. I mean, that's a lot. That's a big, big, significant difference um, between those junglers. So that really is a key factor for my analysis um, because every single other lane is pretty close. I mean, overall, GSPD, BLG has an advantage only by 3%. And then jungle control percentage, BLG has an advantage, which kind of correlates with um, the EGPM difference for the individual junglers. Um, lane, I mean, LNG by a slight margin. And then EGPM in the lane, so this is where it gets interesting. LNG's 80 carry and the mid lane have uh, higher EGPMs compared to um, BLG's. So like uh, Gala, who's been playing really well, Scout, who's been playing really well as well, um, have an advantage over Yagao and Elk. Um, and then BLG, though, June, Bin, and On really have a huge advantage there, especially June, like I said, over Tarzan. Um, I think that's an interesting one where he will probably likely control the game and the pace of the game. Um, June, that will. And BLG likes to play fast. Um, so I think that's why the total kills over under is juiced at 26. That is pretty high. And then the CKPM, like I said, 0 0.93, 0 0.77. I think, you know, BLG having uh, will be dictating the pace of the game just because they will have the jungle advantage there. So I do think either way, I think this is going to be a fast matchup with good kill upside. So I'll probably play both teams, get exposure to both teams in my lineups. I usually play two or three hand-built lineups. Um, so that's probably what I'm going to do just based on the kill upside. And also LNG, like I said, has an advantage in those two lanes, AD carry and mid lane. So I would try to prioritize those LNG laners in those roles. And then, you know, on, on the opposite side for BLG, like I said, June is probably a must have to today. If you are stacking BLG or you could even go one off for, for June and he can maybe pop off, you know, and, and BLG's uh, wins against LNG today. So that's where how I'm going to approach this matchup. I think um, highest kill upside match. I'll put that in my notes. But at the end of the day, I think BLG wins two to one. Um, I will have exposure to both teams as this is the highest kill upside game on the slate. And LNG also has some uh, AGPM advantages and... Uh, a to carry in mid positions. All right. And then we move over to Korea where LSB plus uh, LSB versus uh, okay, Breon are playing against each other. This, on the other hand, completely opposite. It has the lowest combined kills per minute um, that I've seen in a while. For uh, Breon, it's 0. 0.46. I mean, that is below 0. 0.5. That's insane. So I'm just probably going to just avoid this matchup completely unless I'm playing like a team slot team and GPP or stuff like that, mix it up. Um, I think Sandbox really should win here. Uh, but at the same time, Freddie Breon has some favorable metrics. Um, for example, they have a jungle control percentage uh, advantage, even though it's slight. Um, and then, uh, you know, they have a top and support uh, advantage there in terms of EGPM. So yeah, I could see Fred. I could see Breon winning, and I, I could see maybe saving some saving some money, uh, with uh, with Breon in the team slot. Um, but at the same time, I can definitely see Sandbox more likely to win this matchup and maybe be in the optimal lineup and control the jungle, because whoever controls the jungle, it really like that's what I correlate to with the jungle EGPM. I mean, you see Sandbox plus 16 over Fred, uh, Breon's Umti. Um, I think Whittler will really control the game. Um, one other thing, though, um, Ivory will most likely start for Breon at mid, but it is possible Karis plays. 
I think Harris played. I think Harris played in the academy or the challenger level uh, for Sam uh, for um, Brian's team yesterday or two days ago. So I think it is most likely that Ivory is still going to just end up starting. Um, but we'll see. But either way, I don't think I'm going to ha have any exposure to Brian just because, I mean, they have the lowest CKPM. I don't think it's even worth playing if, you know, if you even if you think they'll win. Um, so maybe in the team slot, I think it's the best um, spot for these two teams. So I'm going to say um, LSB wins two to one, and then the team slot low kill upside. All right. And the last matchup of the day is T1 versus KDF. T1 is a big favorite at minus 800. Like I said, um, I think the, the, the biggest favorite on the slate um, at minus 800 total kills over under and set at 20, um, 20 is still kind of I'm much lower than let's say the Weibo gaming one, which was at a 23. So um, still kind of just, you know, be warned that <laughs> One of these games in the series between these two teams, the LCK teams, could end like eight to five or some shit like that. So, and then you'll just be dead in the waters um, with that lineup. Um, so, just be careful when you are playing LCK team, um, LCK stacks. Um, it could happen. Um, as you can see, like T1 has a higher CKPM at 0.67, but playing against KDF, it's kind of low at 0.8, 0.58. So, you know, just, just be warned that it might it might finish in low kills. Uh I do think Huangdong Freaks it has been had has had a really good season so far. Um I am I if I were T1, I would be scared. Um Dudu really has been the engine of that team in the top lane. He's been lights out. Um and then Young Jay has not been bad. I mean, he, I think he's been really good. Um, and then if you look at the metrics, though, I mean, you see gold spend percentage difference. T1 has an advantage. And then it's like slight advantages, right? For jungle control, it's T1, and then lane control is KDF. Uh, but even if you can compare owner versus Young J, um, you see that owner only has a plus 10 EGPM advantage. So not by very much, but still owner has an advantage there. And then Guma Yushi actually has the biggest advantage today over Taeyun. I think this bottom lane is the reason, is the liability, is a liability down there for KDF. Um, and going up against Guma Yushi and Karia, it's going to be a problem, I think. Um, and then Faker actually has been playing well um, and has had higher EGPM compared to Bulldog. Um, so I think that's going to be an interesting one in favor of T1 that's going to help them. Um, KDF's only um, favorable lane is really in the top lane. Like I said, Dudu has been really, really good. But Zeus really knows how to handle that kind of pressure and handle that aggression from the other teams, like elite top laners like that. Um, and you saw that in the, the Worlds tournament last year that he neutralized, you know, the, the strengths of of the, the counterparts top laners. So I do think Zeus is going to take care and hand, handle that. Um, I do think T1 wins, but I don't think it's a. I don't think T1 really deserves these odds based on what I, what we just saw. EGPM difference is minimal, um, and then everything else that we just saw is minimal as well. So, um, I think T1 wins, but um, not T. The T1 doesn't deserve the negative eight hundred odds. KDF is playable in my opinion. Just given the uh, kill upside compared to the other LCK matchup today. Uh, today, um, T1 and KDF are stackable as a secondary stack, in my opinion. All right. So that's, uh, let's see, that's, I think T1 wins two to zero. Um, so anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. I hope these, this was helpful. I'll try to make more videos like this one starting tomorrow again. Um, I'll try to make one every night uh, this week, but um, we'll see how it goes with the moving and packing and unpacking. So if you like the video, if you uh, enjoy the video, if you find our videos insightful and helpful, please, please hit the like button below. 
But hopefully you guys make some money and hopefully my predictions helped um, and the analysis helped. So yeah, until then, until we see each other, I hope you have a, have a profitable, profitable slate and good luck out there. Bye-bye.